against the disciples of the Lord. It said, he went to the high priest. Right. He didn't go to a middle man. Right. He, he went to the high priest to receive authority to continue in his work. Uh -huh. He went to the high priest and he asked letters from him to the synagogues of the masses so that he found anyone who were of the way, whether they were men or women, that he might bring them bound yes, to Jerusalem. Come on. I mean, Paul, Saul, rather, was a committed and devoted individual when it came to his religious order. And he wouldn't receive the proper documentation, a warrant, if you will, to go and arrest anyone who was following Jesus. Right. It's interesting that we live in a day and age where people don't come after us like that. Yeah. But I wonder how you would respond were that the case. What well, if simply because you follow Jesus? Simply because you showed up on Sunday morning. Simply because you listened to the preached word of gospel. Put your faith and trust in me and he alone. I wonder what you would do if all of a sudden you were arrested and persecuted and your life was threatened. It's interesting the story is so a group of worshipers who were worshiping in this hidden place because they were living in a country where the gospel was not allowed to be widespread. So they had to go underground, as it were. And as they were underground, secretly worshiping him. Yes. Stories told that there was a knock at the door. And as they heard the knock at the door and responded to the knock at the door, there were soldiers bearing weapons. And they immediately rushed into the house. Those who had gathered to worship Jesus, many of them were afraid and scared because they knew that their life was in danger. One of the spokespersons spoke up and said, All right, anyone in here who's worshiping Jesus, you have to count five to leave if you want to keep your life. But anyone else, you're committed to worshiping him, and you don't mind losing your life, then you remain seated. And the majority of the people got up out of their seats and walked out of that underground place of worship. Come on. And there was just but a handful of people who were still there sitting in their seats. And those men with those armed, who were armed with these weapons, Close the door and say, now that all the hypocrites are gone, let's really have some church. Which crowd would you find yourself in? The crowd stood up and ran and flee? Or would you be those who were devoted and said, we're not abandoning our Christ? We're not abandoning our faith. We're committed to this even if it costs us our lives. My brothers and my sisters, here it is, Paul was, was seeking out individuals who claimed to be followers of Jesus Christ. He was having them arrested, having them persecuted, many of them lost their lives. But something very interesting happened. As, Jesus, as uh, Saul was on his way to the master, the Bible says that as he journeyed, he came near the master. He was almost near his point of destination. His destination. And, and, and he suddenly was arrested, as it were. Right. The Bible says that a light shone around him from heaven. There was this great high beam that appeared from on high, whereby the, the light was literally shown and cast upon the soul. Watch this. And he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Mm. How interesting it is that this man is on his way to do his business. And there's this great light from heaven that shines upon him. Even to the point, the Bible says, he lost his light. Mm. He was blinded. He fell to the ground and he heard this voice from one eye. And he immediately cries out. That made me sit down and go, that was all He immediately cries out and said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Yes. In other words, don't you realize how hard it is for you 